Doctor, something we talk about a lot, our metabolism, mm -hmm. as an excuse maybe for why we gain weight. So the title of this segment, Your Metabolism, a realistic explanation for weight gain with a question mark. So let's start with the basics. What is metabolism and how does it work? Well, metabolism refers to the energy that the body uses to sustain life. Uh, when we're just sitting in this chair, we burn a certain amount of energy to keep our hearts beating, um, to breathe. Even thought processes uh, require energy, which can be expressed uh, as calories. Now, if we're talking about the resting state, we call that the uh, basal metabolic rate or, or the resting metabolic rate. And this energy basically comes from the food we eat, or if we're not eating, it actually comes from our bodies. We can burn our own fat or our own muscle to uh, create this energy that we need to sustain our metabolism. Now, if we, if we eat more than what our body needs, we will gain weight. But if we actually eat less than what's needed to sustain our body functions, or we increase our metabolism by exercising, we will lose weight. How do we measure metabolism? Can that be done? It can be done. Um, uh, your listeners can Google the Harris-Benedict equation, and this will give you uh, an equation that uses a person's gender, uh, age, and weight to determine the number of calories that a uh, person will uh, burn in the resting state. A simpler way is to take a person's ideal body weight, multiply it by 10, and that basically will give us a rough estimate of the number of calories that we will burn in a resting state. Very interesting. So we've heard people say they have a fast metabolism or, or explain their weight gain by saying they have a slow metabolism. What does that mean? And I think you've answered this, but let's amplify it. How does metabolic rate affect your body? Well, the, the metabolic rate, when we talk about uh, blaming weight loss or lack of it on our metabolism, we, we all have a natural tendency to want to attribute difficulty in losing weight to factors beyond our control, and therefore we aren't responsible for things that we can't, uh, that we do not have control over. In fact, we do have a certain amount of control over our metabolic rate. Seventy percent is fixed by our genes, but thirty percent is a result of um, uh, exercise, which can be which can be varied. So our metabolic rate can um, can be considerably increased. So how often is a slow metabolism the real reason for weight gain? Unfortunately, it's about uh, between a zero and one-tenth of one percent. <laughs> it is very rare that a slow metabolism is responsible for an individual not being able to lose weight. And believe me, this has been searched for uh, in every con conceivable way, looking for evidence that a slow metabolism explains things like the obesity epidemic in America. But when very, very sensitive measures of metabolism are used that, for example, measure the amount of oxygen that we use and the amount of carbon dioxide that we expire, and using that to figure out exactly how much energy we burn, it turns out that it, it's pretty much fixed by things like age, gender, and weight, and does not really explain the, uh, the discrepancies that, that we see. Okay, well then why do some people seem to be able to eat whatever they want and not gain weight and the rest of us have to be careful? Well, number one, life isn't fair and that's probably the best example of that. But number two, uh, there have been studies that look at that, at that specific point. When you examine individuals that seem to be able to eat whatever they want, what we don't know is their behavior when you are not um, uh, when you're not examining them. Like maybe perhaps you have friends, you go out to a restaurant and they, they have the desserts and they seem to eat whatever they want and not gain weight. But it turns out that those people actually tend to eat less after a big meal. If they eat a big meal, they automatically adjust their food intake so that they eat less during the next meal or even the next day. So that they actually end up eating fewer calories overall than those of us that tend to, to gain weight. This has been examined lots of different ways, and, and this is the conclusion that, that has been reached, is that there really are not individuals 
that have a so-called fast metabolism that allows them to eat whatever they want. There sure. are things that can affect metabolism that we are that we can change, but it doesn't seem to, a fast metabolism does not seem to be an intrinsic condition for people that um, have normal weight. So you're just not going to give anybody a pass here, are you? A including myself. <laughs> uh, there, there just really are not free passes, uh, which can be a little bit discouraging. But on the other hand, uh, there are lots of studies that show that there are things that we can do to increase our metabolism and increase the number of calories that, that we burn that will facilitate weight loss. You've touched on this, but let's, let's expand on it. Is metabolism different for men and women, and does it change as we age? Yes and yes. For the, the main difference between men and women is muscle mass. It takes about six calories per pound per day to maintain muscle mass in the resting state and about two pounds for, uh, to maintain body fat. Men intrinsically have more muscle than women do, so it is easier for them to, uh, to lose weight because they have more muscle that is just sitting there burning calories. Women have a greater percentage of their body is fat, which does not use as much energy, and so it's much more difficult for them to lose weight because of the differences in body composition. As we get older, we lose muscle mass, perhaps 1% per year. Strength decreases as we get older, and it's because of that loss of muscle mass. Well, what replaces that loss of mass? It's usually body fat. So as we get older, our metabolism does slow down because we have uh, less muscle and more fat. And if you're, if you're male, that won't be quite as pronounced, but it does occur as we get older. All right. There are times when a person's metabolism doesn't work as it should. Uh, and so what are some of the more common metabolic disorders and what causes them? There are only uh, about two conditions that seem to uh, affect the basic metabolic rate. Uh, one that most people have heard about is uh, thyroid disorders. An overactive thyroid is the one condition where individuals can eat more weight, eat more food than they are accustomed to eating, and they will actually lose weight because it speeds up their metabolism. In fact, some of the less scrupulous weight loss clinics will use this fact um, and will give patients excess thyroid supplements to speed up their metabolism, and it can result in weight loss, but it also has possible toxic effects, such as in the heart, can cause atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. So it's not considered a medically safe um, solution for the, for the problem of weight loss. The other condition are adrenal disorders where the body produces too much cortisone called Cushing's syndrome, and that can cause weight gain out of proportion to the uh, food that people eat. So thyroid excess can cause weight loss. Adrenal excess can cause weight gain. Mm -hmm. And conversely, if you have an underactive thyroid, you will tend to, uh, it'll be easier for you to, to gain weight. It requires extremes of uh, either over or underactive thyroid in order to result in weight gain or weight loss that, that's not expected. Minor variations in the blood level of thyroid hormone are not, do not really affect weight as much as our patients would like to hope that they would. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those two disorders, Signs and symptoms? How do we know if, in fact, it is one of those things? Well, very, very nonspecific, which means they are, they are symptoms that we see in lots of different disorders, like thyroid excess, nervousness, uh, heat intolerance. You walk into a room and you feel hot. Everyone else is, is, is comfortable. Um, clammy skin, uh, irritability. Uh, mood changes, those can be signs of thyroid excess. Uh, signs of an underactive thyroid can be lethargy, sleepiness, swelling of the extremities, constipation, just a general slowing down of the body. Uh, like I say, these are symptoms that are seen in lots of different conditions, so if you have those symptoms, it doesn't mean that your thyroid's uh, out of whack, but it does mean that you probably ought to, it's worthwhile having it checked. All right. 
generally speaking, the best steps we can take to maintain a healthy metabolism? The, the single best step we can take is to increase our physical activity. Up to 30% or more of the calories we burn per day uh, are the result or can be the result of physical activity such as, as walking. There are specific physical activities that are even better than just, than just walking. Um, interval training, for example, an individual that actually uh, alternates jogging and walking or, or running and walking, putting your body under stress for two minutes and then relaxing and then stress for a couple of minutes, uh, what, what's called interval training, really seems to rev up the metabolism. And the good news is it revs it up even after you have finished exercising. It's called the post-exercise effect. Uh, if you have a pretty good workout for 45 minutes, your metabolism will be uh, accelerated for the next few hours of the day. So there's that, that additional effect that you get. Not to mention the cardiovascular benefits of exercise and the benefits on, on mood. Uh, the other effect of exercise is it uh, builds muscle mass, which as we mentioned, increases our, our body's ability to, to, to burn energy. So strength training activities in addition to aerobic activities are very helpful. So the ideal exercise plan that would increase our metabolism, help us manage our weight, would be one that combined aerobic activity and then strength training. Strength training only two or three times per week and aerobic activity two or three times per week. What kind of a calorie deficit do we need to run in order to lose weight? The ideal deficit, and that's a great question, it's very important. The ideal deficit is about 500 calories per day, which will result in the weight loss of a pound per week. There are 3,500 calories per pound, so in the course of seven days, you, you have a deficit of 500 calories, that'll be a pound per week. The reason it's such an important question is that if we try to lose uh, more weight than a pound per week, we will actually slow down our metabolism. If you really want to slow down your metabolism, uh, go into a fasting mode. Just skip meals. Your body thinks it's starving. It starts uh, slowing down all the body processes because it doesn't know when the next meal is going to come. And so you actually will burn a lot less energy. The ideal meal plan would be one in which you would eat four times per day but you would have a caloric deficit of 500 calories per day, which can be the result of a combination of exercising. If you walk three miles a day, that's 300 calories, and you reduce your food intake by 200 calories, which is very manageable, that would be 500 calories per day, combining the exercise and food. And so over the course of a week, that would be a pound a week, four pounds a month, or, 48, or 52 pounds per year. And then we're talking about very significant weight loss. And in addition, if you combine it with exercise, you're, you're going to be healthier. If you just have a hypocaloric diet, especially one in which you lose more than a pound a week, you're going to lose muscle and you will actually at the end of that diet have a slower metabolism than when you started. And when you go off the diet, and most people do, mm. they notice that the weight really picks up very quickly. And part of the reason for that rapid weight regain is that you end the diet with less muscle mass and a slower metabolism. So you gain weight even more quickly than when, when you started Which the diet. we've seen, re huge rebounds. Every, it's u a universal problem, which is why less is more when it comes to weight loss. Um, easy does it, I mean, we're in it for the long term. We need to think in terms of months and years instead of days and weeks as far as our, our weight loss goals. Very well. Doctor? Very informative as always, and we thank you. Thank you very much.